This is a picture of my first ever target that I shot with my A2 AR-15 at 850 yards. And this is the rifle that I shot that target with. After a couple of warm-up shots, I was able to put uh, seven out of 10 hits onto that target. And I was actually pr pleasantly surprised how easy it was to do that. Um, the furthest I had ever shot uh, an AR-15 with iron sights was 567 yards. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably seen me up in Shiocton, Wisconsin doing that. But uh, this time I shot at 800 yards. And again, I was surprised at um, the ease in which I hit the target. Now, was there maybe some luck involved that day? Sure. I mean, shooting your AR-15 with iron sights is kind of like golf. There's good days and there's bad days. Uh, and unfortunately, on this day, I did not get this on video. This was a few years ago. Um, however, I will roll in some video later into this um, step-by-step uh, -step process that shows you the six easy steps I use to hit targets or engage targets out to 800 yards. Before we get into the six easy steps I use to shoot my AR-15 with iron sights out to 800 yards, uh, let's first go over the required equipment. Obviously, you have to have an AR-15. Um, now, this one has an integrated carry handle, which makes it a little easier, but is not required to do this. What is required is you need to have a rear elevation drum that we can click. And this is because we're gonna be using precise aiming. We're not going to be using holdover to hit the target. We're not going to be guessing in space where to hold. We're not going to be pointing the gun in the direction of the target and saying the Hail Mary and hope it hits. We're actually going to use um, aimed fire. So the integrated carry handle is by far the best option to do that. The other option you can use is you can use a 16-inch uh, barrel with a um, adjustable rear elevation wheel on the back, such as this one. And you can get these sights like this and put them on a gun that's either 16 inches or 20 inches, and it'll do approximately the same thing. There's gonna be some adjustments in the wheel from the detachable kind like this and the integrated kind. The integrated kind will give you a little bit more elevation uh, to shoot out farther than uh, this kind will. What's not gonna work is something like this Matek that uh, has uh, adjustments on the side here for 200, 300, 400, 500. This is just not gonna be precise enough for uh, what we are trying to accomplish. The next thing you're gonna need is obviously some ammunition, and I'm gonna suggest that you get uh, either 77 or 75 grain ammunition. Now, don't worry about your twist rate on your barrel. Um, a one and nine twist will shoot 77 or 75 grain ammunition. You just gotta go uh, and check it out. If you're unsure about it, take a look at my other videos that I've done on twist rate. In fact, this gun that I shot out to 800 yards is a one and nine twist, and I shot 75 grain bullets through it to get the target engaged at 800 yards. So don't worry about that. Other than that, let's get into the uh, six easy steps I use to shoot out at distance. The first thing you're gonna need uh, to shoot out the distance with your AR-15 iron sights is a spotter. You're just not gonna be able to do this alone. You won't be able to see your misses or impacts into your berm at the shooting range without some type of either spotting scope that your spotter is looking through to guide you on target or some type of even, doesn't have to be a spotting scope, it could be a rifle scope, it could be binoculars, but anything to see those impacts into the ground and walk you onto the target. So you're gonna need a person uh, to spot for you and then they're gonna have to have some optics. The second thing that we're gonna have to do with uh, iron sights is we're gonna have to pay attention to the sun position. Now, if we have a target here and we have our firing position, we really need to have the sun behind us when we're shooting to light up that target. Because once we get past about you know 200 yards, uh, sometimes that target can be awfully difficult to see. So especially if the sun is back behind the target, it just creates a target uh, shadow on the target and it blends into the um, a berm a lot of times. Now, every range is gonna have a different layout 
And if I go up to Shiocton, Wisconsin and shoot, I have to shoot in the afternoon because that's the time when the sun comes behind me and I can see the target well. If I'm at Young's Long Shot in Indiana, which if you watch some of my, my other videos, uh, I need to shoot my iron sights in the morning because the sun is behind my back at that time. So just pay attention to the layout of the range and you'll figure it out because just the way I figured it out, you go there and you can't see the target. So figure out what the best time is for you to get that sun behind you and you'll be able to clearly see your target out at distance. The third step to shooting out at distance um, with our AR-15 is to get the correct uh, rifle zero. Now I'm going to suggest that you do a 25 yard zero on either your 20 inch barrel or your 16 inch barrel when you're shooting out at distance. Um, you can do a 50 yard zero, which this was originally zeroed for, and I shot out to 800 yards, but it's a little harder. If you look at the ballistics tables, a 25 yard zero will give you a little further second zero than the 50 yard zero. So the 50 yard zero is approximately called the 200 yard zero with the second impact hitting at 200 yards, and the 25 300 zero with the um, second zero on that 25 yard hitting around 300 yards. And that's important because we don't want to adjust our elevation drum at that point in time. Um, when we zero the rifle, we want to get a good zero, and it's in fact a little easier to get a good zero at 25 yards. We want to also make sure that we have our elevation drum flush down and not raised, that we're doing all of our zeroing with our elevation with our front sight post. Um, on the 25 yard line. Now, uh, if you have a 20 inch barrel with an integrated handle, this is gonna be marked at the 8-3 position. We want to leave it at the 8-3 position and we're gonna ignore all the other markings uh, at that position uh, on the elevation drum. If we have a 16 inch barrel with a detachable handle or a detachable uh, rear sight like this, it's gonna be marked 6-3. We want that flush down on the 6.3, not below it, but right on it, the 6.3, because we're going to be clicking this uh, back and forth when we adjust our elevation out to distance. And we're, again, we're going to ignore all the other markings on the rear drum except the 6.3 position, the initial starting position. And I'll go over that a little later as to why that's important. Uh, but for now, just know that we have to zero. We have to have our elevation drum flat at the 8.3 or 6.3 position. All right, the fourth thing that we're going to have to know is we're going to have to know our bullet's velocity. And this is probably the trickiest part of uh, the six steps. Uh, we have to know our bullet's velocity in order to shoot out to distance. Well, how do we do that? Well, the simplest way is to have like a lab radar or uh, some other type of chronograph and we simply just take three shots and we can get an average of those three shots and that will be the uh, bullet velocity that we're going to need for later on. Uh, the other way that we can do it um, is we can go off the box of the manufacturer. Now just because the manufacturer says for instance that uh, these bullets shoot 2,750 feet per second does not mean they're going to shoot 2,750 feet per second in your particular rifle. But it gets us close. Um, out of the three 20-inch uh, rifles that I have, uh, this particular ammunition shoots uh, in all three of those rifles between about 2,800 and 2,825 feet per second. Now, if I'm shooting this ammunition out of a 16-inch carbine length uh, uh, gas system with a 16-inch barrel, I'm getting out of my 16-inch barrels about 2620 feet per second. So we can go off that guesstimate as well. But you're also going to have to look at your manufacturer's uh, ammunition and find out what the length of the barrel is that they are shooting their ammunition through. So if they're shooting a 20-inch barrel uh, in their gun and you're shooting a 16, you're probably not going to get that velocity. If they're shooting a 24-inch barrel and you have a 20-inch gun, uh, there'll be a little difference but not as much because uh, 223 doesn't get much benefit beyond a 20-inch barrel. A little bit but not as much as between 16 and 20-inch barrel. 
So that's the next step in the process that we're going to have to take. We're going to have to know our bullet's velocity. We're going to have to know our bullet's ballistic coefficient and some environmental factors that we are going to enter into a ballistic calculator. If you don't know how to use a ballistic calculator, I'm going to do a separate video along with this one for AR-15 owners and show you how to use a ballistic calculator. So at this time, I assume you know how to use the ballistic calculator and can enter those parameters into the computer and get the results for the firing solution that you need. So I'm gonna do that right now and we're gonna go through those firing solutions and I'll roll in some tape and we're gonna show you how this works out. All right, on the screen right now is our ballistic chart that I've entered all our uh, velocity, ballistic coefficient into the uh, JBM ballistic calculator, which is a free online calculator and is the one that I will recommend to you. And again, if you don't know how to use it, I'm going to do another video showing the exact step-by-step -step process so that you're not lost in this. But for now, you can see that I have entered a range of 567 yards to shoot. And the thing that we are interested in right now is the elevation or the drop. And that's listed in MOA. And as you can see here, it's listed as 11 and a half MOA. So that's the solution that we need to enter on our rifle on our rear drum. For an AR-15 with an integrated carry handle, each click of your rear drum will be one MOA. If you have uh, a 16 inch barrel with a carbine length gas system on your AR-15, each click of your rear drum will be three quarters MOA. If you have a detachable carry handle on your 20 inch rifle, each click of your rear drum will be one half MOA. So in our chart here, if we have a 20 inch barrel, which I'm going to shoot on screen, and it has an integrated handle, which it does, we need to do 11 or 12 clicks on the rear drum because each click is one MOA. I can't do a half a click, so I have to either uh, do 11 or 12, but that's gonna be close enough for us. And as you can see in the video here, I'm raising the rear drum on the uh, elevation wheel, and in fact, I decided to go up to 12 clicks. So let's take a look at how I do shooting at 567 yards, and then after that, we'll go over how to handle the windage uh, when shooting the AR-15 at distance. You missed at 10 o'clock. You hit uh, close to the one in the middle. You hit close to the ball side. You hit the screw again. All right, just a couple of things before we get into our last uh, step, which is step six, is I forgot to indicate in the elevation phrase, uh, phase, step five, if you are using a 16 inch barrel, I indicated that um, for every click of your elevation wheel is three quarters of an MOA. So if you have to enter 12 MOA into your rifle, it's very easy with a 20 inch rifle because in that rifle, one MOA is one click, you just do 12 clicks. But if you only have uh, three quarters of a click for each MOA, what you have to do is you have to multiply the number of clicks. So number 12 that we need to get out to the distance by three quarters. So we take 12 times four and we get 48 we divide by three, the top number on the three quarters, and we get 16. So we'd have to enter 16 elevation clicks to get out to distance with a carbine length gas system. All right, so if you're still with me, you're probably very interested in actually trying to do this. And I will give you a clue that there is a little bit of a modification to this system that 
will get you out to a thousand yards, which I'm going to do in a subsequent video. And if you've ever tried to shoot your irons at a thousand, it is uh, an amazing experience and I would encourage everybody to give it a try. So short of that, uh, what we need to do is we need to get to step six, which is going to be using our windage. So our, or calculating our windage. So if you're sophisticated enough to know how to use the JBM computer ballistics tables, you might calculate your windage uh, with that program. So if you calculate that you need one MOA to the right, you can use your windage drum here on the rear of the rifle. And for every click of your windage drum on the rear of your rifle, you will move your bullet a half MOA. So if it calls for one MOA, you're gonna to have to move it two clicks. And this is regardless of barrel length. So if you got a 20 inch barrel, it's still um, a half MOA. If you have a 16 inch barrel, it's a half MOA. So if you have four MOA uh, to the right that you're gonna to have to move uh, your windage, you're gonna to have to move that eight clicks. If you don't wanna do that, which I don't do, I, I put some windage on my uh, rear windage wheel, but I also use my front sight post. And I'll go over how to use the front sight post if you wanna use a combination of it, or you can just entirely use your front sight post, and then you're gonna get more into that Kentucky windage of where to aim, uh, which I don't like to do. I like to put my front sight post at least touching my target. But let's go over if you wanna use your front sight post. All right, there are a couple of different ways to use your front sight post. And because I couldn't find a, a white uh, target circle, uh, we're using the second best thing, a flour tortilla. So when we're shooting our AR-15, and this is our front sight post, and the flour tortilla is our target, we can simply aim at the target. And if we miss the target over here, we simply just use our front sight post and move it over until our shot gets into the center of the uh, target. Now, in heavier winds, uh, this can be a little bit more challenging. And what I like to do is use a combination of uh, trying to use my rear uh, sight windage wheel and dial in some of the MOA on that wheel. Um, so if I need five MOA of wind, uh, then I can put in three MOA of wind or whatever I want to do and use my um, front sight for the rest. Now what also I've done is um, I measure my front sight post so that I know how many MOA wide my front sight post is. So if uh, and the way you, you do this is you take several different circles, uh, you take like a nine inch circle, a 10 inch circle to the range, and you put the, place these at 100 yards. And if I place my nine inch circle at 100 yards and my sight covers like this, then I know that my front sight is wider than nine MOA wide. If I take my next circle and put it down there at 100 yards, and this is a 10 inch circle, and my front sight post exactly covers up that circle, I know that my front sight post is 10 MOA wide. What that means is I can simply know that if I split my front sight post down the middle and it's 10 wide, I know that this is five MOA and this distance is five MOA. So if I want to, uh, and I know the exact dimensions of my target, I can shift this around. So I know that this distance right here is half of five, that's two MOA wide. So if I know that I missed my target, uh, by, uh, let's say, I shot here and I missed it by uh, two MOA uh, or two and a half MOA, 
then I know to move my sight post here because this is two and a half MOA wide. Now that can get a little confusing, um, but that's just how I do it. So I try to use my knowledge of the width of my sight post uh, in my calculations uh, with my spotter to help me determine how far I missed the target, and it seems to help me get on target a little quicker. I think most people will just eyeball it like this and then move it here, remember where they shot, move it more, and that's another solution to the problem.